Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Sunday, August 25th, and here in the Atlantic we're seeing this area of the world in the Gulf of Mexico light up with a lot of thunderstorms over the last couple of days, and this is in response to high pressure building over the southeastern U.S. at the same time as the MJO comes in from the west and enhances upward motion here, and this is a pattern, as we've talked about for the last few days, that is unstable for this region with anomalous easterlies coming in uh, to the Gulf of Mexico with tropical waves coming in from the southeast is an unstable situation, and we've had a couple of disturbances develop. One is a surface trough over the north near the North Gulf Coast, which is not really a threat to develop, unlikely to become a depression, but it is moving westward, bringing rains to the Gulf Coast, and Texas certainly needs some of this rain, so hopefully they get some of this over the next couple of days. To the south of Mexico, we have a Pacific tropical low that is likely to become a tropical storm there, and sandwiched in between these two features, we have newly designated Tropical Depression 6, which was just upgraded by the National Hurricane Center. This developed from a tropical wave that came across across the Yucatan Peninsula last night and was able to develop a low that has spun up quickly in the Bay of Campeche, which is famous for allowing very quick spin-ups of strong tropical storms um, in this area. So this is uh, starting to, looks like rapidly strengthen over the last few hours, you can see it's spinning nicely here. It's a tropical depression right now, but we already have a buoy near the coastline, well away from the center of the storm, actually already showing tropical storm force winds with higher gusts and a tanking pressure. So it looks like this storm is really starting to intensify quickly. We have a plane uh, coming down here, flying towards the center of the storm. By the time this is uploaded, they will probably have sampled the center and they will gauge the true intensity of this storm. So although it's strengthening quickly right now, the good news is that it is within 12 hours of landfall and so will not be able to become all that strong before it runs into Mexico moving west-northwest here making landfall somewhere northwest of Veracruz. So we can see this activity um, in the western part of the Atlantic and again this is associated with the MJO which is increasing upward motion in the area and remember the MJO moves west to east so we're going to expect all this upward motion to propagate eastward over the next week or two and so this is going to start uh, allowing upward motion and destabilization of what has been a pretty stable atmosphere out here in the central and eastern Atlantic where we haven't seen a lot of thunderstorms recently uh, but that's likely to change and this area is going to become more favorable for these tropical waves coming off of Africa Africa to finally start developing. It's getting a little late in the year for this, uh, but September uh, we're probably going to see a large burst of storms coming off of Africa from these waves. And right now we're watching a new one that's just now coming off of Africa, has a nice little bit of spin to it. This is going to be coming westward on a fairly low latitude track and uh, along this intertropical convergence zone, which is farther north than normal, providing enhanced cyclonic vorticity or spin in here to help these waves uh, spin up a little bit better. And uh, this particular one here has a decent chance of developing. Uh, most of the models are now actually unanimously developing to this, this into some kind of a tropical cyclone in about a week. This is the GFS at day 8 showing a hurricane east of the Caribbean. Actually has another storm developing behind this one. This is the Canadian showing the same storm. Doesn't have anything back here yet, uh, but it does develop the front system um, east of the Caribbean in about a week. And we have the European also showing a tropical cyclone east of the islands in nine days. And this is weaker than the GFS and the Canadian, but this is also the first time this year that the European has developed a tropical cyclone in the Eastern Atlantic. And the European is generally our most reliable model in the Atlantic. So to see it agree with the GFS and Canadian on at least some kind of a tropical cyclone east of the Caribbean in about a week means that uh, we have a very, very good chance of seeing this particular wave develop somewhere in this area. And so the islands will have to keep an eye on it in case it comes far enough south to affect them in about a week's time. Now this is the European Ensemble uh, mean uh, sea level pressure out to day 8 and we can see the purple colors here indicating ensemble disagreement which means several ensemble members at least are showing some kind of a tropical cyclone in this area and you can see it trying to show an area behind as well that's the area the GFS showed becoming a second storm the European is trying to pick up on that as well so you can see the ensemble picking up on this if we look at the upper level pattern now here's the upper level pattern for the same time and we can see the system trying to develop down here and we see a trough over the Canadian Maritimes on the European Ensemble mean. Now, this is way too far out to discuss uh, what the track of a potential system developing here might be. First of all, we have to wait for storms to develop before talking about their track, and this is also close to 10 days out before this would have any kind of a chance of affecting land if it comes far enough west. So we can't talk about the track of this particular system yet, but there are a couple of things I'd like to mention about this pattern, because this goes back to what we talked about before the season began, that the setup this year 
might be cause for the Eastern Caribbean and Eastern United States to worry a little bit more than average about landfalls. There's typically one and a half hurricane landfalls in the United States every year. It's possible, I think, that this year we may have a more than average chance for landfalls. And this is because of three things that are really making the pattern dangerous. One is that more than average tropical waves are coming off Africa and they are stronger. We have a very healthy wave train this year and they've been coming off one after another. They haven't started developing yet. It's getting a little late for that now, but with the pattern the way it is, September is likely to see a large burst of storms. We already have the Europeans showing the potential for two storms. And once this train starts, it may not stop for a few weeks uh, where waves come off one after another and start developing into tropical cyclones and of course the more the more storms form uh, the greater the chance that at least one or two of them get far enough west to make landfall or even more than two as we saw in some years like 2004 where four hurricanes hit Florida those kind of patterns can happen the other things that we have to worry about is uh, that there's a lot of warm water in the northwestern Atlantic this year. You can see all this red and orange here indicating warmer than normal water. Usually in a positive AMO like we have this year, this warmer water is up towards Greenland and Iceland, promoting more blocking ridging up here. But this year it's farther south, and so we have a lot of warm water in here, and this tends to raise the heights south of Newfoundland. And in a pattern like this, that tends to fight these kinds of troughs. You see troughs like this digging down into the Canadian Maritimes. The warm water here tends to raise heights and fight that trough. So when the troughs dig in like this, they don't tend to stick around for very long. So troughs like this can come in and then immediately leave, leaving ridging behind south of Newfoundland and then help direct these storms close enough to land so that when they recurve, they end up hitting the Caribbean or the United States. The other thing that is worrisome is that we've had a stronger than normal a vortex or upper level low pressure over Greenland and Iceland this year. This is a positive NAO pattern and uh, this is in contrast to what we had during the last few years, 2010 and 2011, where we had blocking ridging over Greenland. This promoted troughing underneath of it and allowed a lot of storms to recurve east of the United States with the exception of Irene. Uh, and that is why uh, many storms missed the United States in those years. This year, it is the opposite. And what this does is when you have a strong Greenland vortex, this brings the jet stream farther north than normal. And you can see here that even though there's a trough over the Canadian Maritimes, look at how far north it is. The jet stream is flowing over Canada to here. And you can see that there's actually a subtropical ridge south of the trough. The trough is so far north that there's actually still a ridge here. And if this trough is able to leave because of the warm water to the northeast, we could be left with a flat jet and a ridge developing underneath, which could potentially bring storms like this close enough to hit the, hit the United States. And again, it's too far out right now to talk about the specific track for this particular storm. But what I'm trying to say is that this kind of a pattern that we've had all summer long and is continuing as far as we can tell in the model forecasts is one that can bring systems like this into the United States or the Caribbean islands. So this is something that should be watched um, for September. Now that we're starting to get the storms, just take this as a reminder that it's the peak of the season. Storms are going to start forming and becoming hurricanes, and some of those hurricanes could very well hit land this year. So we're going to keep a close eye on that. Again, here's Tropical Depression 6, likely to be named for NAN sometime this afternoon. The airplane will likely know the true strength of the system by the time you see this video, and this will be quickly moving inland to Mexico. Not a huge threat except for rainfall, though very strong winds will be hitting the coastline northwest of Veracruz as this comes ashore. Eastern Atlantic, quiet for the immediate moment, but within a week, the models agree on a storm forming east of the Caribbean in here, so we will keep a close eye on this situation as it develops, and we'll see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.